as you might have figured out from my voice yes i have got a cold and i guess feelings are not the only thing i can catch but before beginning the lecture itself i want to apologize right now for the unclarity in my voice and the lack of power in my voice but with that today is the beginning of a new story or the beginning of a new chapter shall i say and what's that you'll come to know soon enough the haploid sperm of a of a male fuses or fertilizes the haploid egg of a female the sperm and the egg they are gametes what are gametes gametes are the haploid reproductive cells these two haploid reproductive cells or gametes they fertilize to form a diploid zygote this diploid zygote then develops into an embryo which further develops into a fetus this whole process is what you are going to learn in the topic of embryology basically the events taking place before the formation of embryo the events taking place during the formation of embryo and the events taking place after the formation of embryo is what you're going to learn on the, the topic of embryology but here's the problem the gametes that fuse together to form a diploid zygote are haploid that is sperm and egg they are haploid that is sperm and egg they contain half the number of chromosomes a typical cell contains but the thing is throughout human body all the cells present in human body are diploid that is they contain two sets of chromosome but the gametes are haploid that is they contain only one out of the two sets of chromosome how is it possible that our body form something that is not typical to the cells present in our body well there are these special cells present in human body that actually play the role of forming these haploid cells and these special cells are called germ cells germ cells are actually diploid but these germ cells they go through a process called gametogenesis to form these haploid gametes ga me to genesis genesis means generation and gameto refers to gamete so basically the generation of gametes is known as gametogenesis by the process of gametogenesis diploid germ cells give rise to haploid gametes where the sperm is the male gamete and egg is the female gamete if you are talking about sperm then the gametogenesis is called spermatogenesis if we are talking about egg then the gametogenesis is known as oogenesis in today's lecture we are going to look at spermatogenesis among the two different types of gametogenesis so let's begin with spermatogenesis the topic of today's lecture is spermatogenesis here genesis refers to generation and spermato refers to sperm so the generation of the production of sperm in male body is called spermatogenesis this takes place from puberty till old age before puberty sperm formation does not take place at all before puberty the germ cells that are responsible for the formation of sperm are inactive once the boy hits puberty the process of formation of sperm begins or spermatogenesis begins so spermatogenesis is the process of formation of sperm process of formation of sperm or spermatogenesis starts from puberty and lasts till old age but the question is where does spermatogenesis take place where are these germ cells responsible for spermatogenesis they are right here this is the scrotum or the bag that contains your testes 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 are the primary reproductive organ of human body why are testes called primary reproductive organ cause testes are responsible for the formation of male gamete or sperm inside testes you can find a number of highly coiled tubes 
highly coiled tubes highly coiled tubes highly coiled tubes and these tubes are where the process of formation of sperm takes place and these tubes inside which the formation of sperm takes place are called semi me fe ros tubules so the answer to the question where does spermatogenesis take place or where does the pro where does the process of formation of sperm take place the answer to that question is spermatogenesis or sperm generation takes place inside the seminiferous tubules of the testes of a male body the wall of the seminiferous tubules contains germinal epithelium germinal epithelium is a special type of epithelium that is responsible for the formation of gametes let's zoom into a piece of this germinal epithelium so this right here i have zoomed into a germinal epithelium germinal epithelium from the chapter of animal tissue my, you might have already known is actually a simple cuboidal epithelium that is it contains cube like cells arranged in a single layer and these cuboidal cells are actually the germ cells responsible for the formation of gamete so this is the germinal epithelium which is found lining the wall of the seminiferous tubules germinal epithelium among the several germ cells let's pick one single germ cell so i just picked this one germ cell okay this germ cell that i picked right here is known as primordial primordial germ cell nothing complicated here simply germ cell is the cell that gives rise to gamete since this germ cell is the one that is present at the very beginning or at the very primary stage it's called primordial germ cell that's it this primordial germ cell goes through a number of steps to form sperm and these number of steps they come under spermatogenesis so let's look at the different steps or the stages of spermatogenesis first and foremost the primordial germ cell is obviously deployed because all the structures present in human body are deployed even the germ cells they are deployed this primordial germ cell divides or multiplies and forms several other germ cells during this division cell division the number of chromosome remains same so the type of cell division taking place here is mitosis so by the process of mitosis primordium germ cell divides into multiple germ cells these germ cells these cells diploid cells formed by the mitosis of primordial germ cells that later gives rise to sperm are called spermatogonia spermatogonia spermato refers to sperm gonia refers to offspring basically sperms are going to be the offspring or the baby of these cells so these cells are called spermatogonia and that's it so what has happened in the first step in the first step the primordial germ cell has gone through a process of multiplication and has increased its number this particular phase is known as multiplication phase due to the multiplication of the primordial germ cell okay from the several spermatogonia formed from a single primordial germ cell few spermatogonia they devour or eat as much nutrition as possible and grow in size so i took this spermatogonium right here this spermatogonium feeds on as much nutrition as possible and grows in size the genetic material inside the cell has not changed the size of the cell has simply increased due to the intake of nutrition this particular cell which is the largest cell throughout the process is called primary spermatocyte cyte means cell 
spermatosperm and primary. Basically, this is the primary cell responsible for the formation of sperm. In this particular phase, the size of the cell has grown. That's why it's called growth phase. After growth phase. Now, here's the thing. Zom cells are deployed, but the gametes that they are about to form are haploid. Primary spermatocyte is deployed, but the gametes that it needs to make, that is the sperms that it needs to make are haploid. So from a diploid cell, you need to go to a haploid cell. And what's the method with which a diploid cell converts to haploid cell? Come on, what's the process? Here's the diploid cell containing two sets of chromosome. This needs to convert into a haploid cell containing only one set of chromosome. What process does it go through? What's the process? Come on! It's meiosis. And we know that meiosis contains two steps, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. First, the primary spermatocyte goes through meiosis 1. Meiosis 1. And we know that meiosis 1 is a redoxinal phase. That is, the number of chromosome becomes half. So, from the diploid primary spermatocyte, one single diploid primary spermatocyte, two haploid secondary spermatocytes are formed. Further, Meiosis 2 takes place. Meiosis 2 is equational division. That is, it is similar to that of mitosis. Here, the number of chromosome does not change. It, it remains the same. So, from one secondary spermatocyte, two spermatid. Again, from another secondary spermatocyte, two spermatid. A total of four spermatids are formed. This right here is maturation phase. Basically, the primary spermatocyte has matured into haploid spermatids. Maturation phase. But here's the thing. In order for the male gamete to fertilize the egg, it needs to be motile. Sperm is motile. That's why it can move towards the egg and fertilize it. However, spermatids, they are not motile. So these spermatids, they need to be converted into its motile form called sperms. Each individual spermatids they can get converted to motile sperms, motile sperm, motile sperm, motile sperm. So these are sperms. They are haploid as well. And the process by which spermatids get converted to sperm is known as spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis. And this is how the process of spermatogenesis completes. Let me revise it for you. First, there's a diploid primordial zom cell. This diploid primordial zom cell goes through the process of mitosis to form multiple spermatogonia. Since in this process, multiplication of the cell has occurred without any change in the number of chromosome, it's called multiplication phase and the type of cell division is mitosis. At the end of multiplication phase, several spermatogonia are formed. Among the several spermatogonia, Few spermatogonia, they eat as much nutrition as possible and grow in size. There's no change in genetic material, just the size of the cell has grown due to the intake of nutrition. And this phase is known as growth phase. At the end of the growth phase, primary spermatocyte, which is diploid, is formed. Primary spermatocyte then needs to form haploid sperms, so it goes through the process of meiosis to form haploid sperms. Meiosis has two steps, meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 is reductional, so the number of chromosome halves from diploid primary spermatocyte two haploid secondary spermatocytes are formed. Then meiosis 2, which is equational, just like mitosis, no change in number of chromosome takes place. So from a single secondary spermatocyte, two spermatids, or from two secondary spermatocytes, four spermatids are formed, which are obviously haploid. Throughout this phase, the primary spermatocyte has matured into spermatids that give rise to sperm, so-called maturation phase. Finally, these spermatids, which are non-motile, get converted into their motile form called sperms, which are haploid as well by the process of spermiogenesis.